<laughs> My name for the record is Doug Johnson. My name's Scott Boyer. <laughs> John Sackney. All right, and uh, you guys are here because you, you guys did the Ring the Peak Trail. So tell me first what the trail is and why you did it. It's more like a, a series of like Jeep roads and uh, pieces, small pieces of single track that kind of connect all the way around the peak that I think the people from Friends of the Peak originally kind of mapped it out and organized the whole thing. Um, and they mar you know, marked the whole thing too, although a lot of the markers are gone now, but it's a, it's, you know, a series of trails and, and Jeep roads and, and then now we had to take paved road and goal camp, but, cause it's not finished, but it goes all the way around Pikes Peak, around the front range, around the backside and then around Mount Baldy as well. It was definitely a grand initiative on the Friends of the Peak part to map this whole thing and put it all together, and, but we're really glad that they did it because um, it's nice to have these big challenges in your own backyard. What was the original impetus for doing it and how long ago did they do it? I think originally, it's I think it's been an official trail where they've had markers and everything on it for four years now, but it's it's they started it more than eight years ago to try to get everything going on it. Don't quote me, I'm not exactly positive on that. It's just some stuff that's been on the interwebs. Is this something that they're trying to, like, link? Are they trying to to make it one one giant trail? Is that the is that the ultimate goal? And are people also are people using it with regularity? Is it catching on? Is it? I would say for sure. You know, just from like letting people know that we've done it, there's a huge amount of interest in like, you know, people because the local parts of the trail are Palmer Trail, Section 16, Inman Trail, U Pass Trail, and that's all stuff that's heavily used by hikers and bikers here in the front range so I think everybody's always seeing the ring the peak markers on those trails and curious what the other pieces are like and if it actually connects I don't think everybody knows the specifics but I think everybody's pretty interested in it I think once it's completed it'll actually become pretty popular once it actually goes the full way around talk if you could a little bit about the different sections and the various levels of difficulty the trail itself, I mean, there's definitely some easier sections on it, and that's mostly the stuff that we ride all the time right here on the Front Range that, that like, like Scott said, that we're, you know, that everybody sees. But the, the stuff on the, towards the backside of the peak and the stuff that climbs up from Green Mountain Falls, real difficult. A lot of it's hiking sections. I'm sure that's why not a lot of people or a lot of bikers do it because um, there are a lot, quite a few hiking sections. But for us, it's just an added challenge to do that whole thing and, you know, do the hiking sections. And this, I think you guys said that it's it's 12,000 vertical feet total climbing and descending, is that right, over the course of it, plus how many, 88 miles? Uh, it's a it little bit, a little bit less than that. It was the, the last tally that we had that we took off of Paul, another guy that did it with us, his GPS. He said it was 72 miles and almost 11,000 feet of climbing. I'm sure depending on what you take, because there's a lot of options around the peak to take, if you, if you stray off of the you know, definitive ring the peak trail, you can get more mileage or less mileage. Yeah, you're faced with choices on the, on the trail too where it splits and you can either take what the defined route is and oftentimes that's um, double track or jeep road for sections or you can take single track and we opted to take single track with every single option that we had just to get as much actual trail in as we could and I don't know I think that might have taken away some of the elevation gain in certain spots like on U Pass trail and stuff but I think overall way more fun though way more fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> so how long had you been planning this and had anybody else done this before uh, yeah, there's been a few other people that have done it before, and, and we've seen their, they've posted things on their blogs that they've done it. Not a lot of the blogs that people have posted have done it all in one shot. Like, I don't think we've only seen like maybe three or four of them where people have done it just in one day push. A lot of people seem to do it in several day pushes or mm -hmm. more. But first blog I think we saw was maybe three years ago. Scott Morris used to live in town, yeah. and he, he did it in one big push, and and ever since then, I'm, I've just been really amped to do it. I was amped to do it the first 
the first time I saw that that Friends of the Peak were going to build this Ring the Peak Trail or link all this trail together. And I wanted to do it then because I thought it was all going to be subalpine stuff, but this isn't really. I mean, it doesn't get much more over 11,000 at any point, mm-hmm. at the highest point. Were you thinking that it went above Timberline? or you... I, I was thinking that that's what the whole thing was, is right at Timberline uh, or above. I guess you could um, ring the peak up at the top, yeah, but the top. it'd be a really fast ride. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're done, let's go. <laughs> so how about as far as, is is the difficulty of it, technical or is it just vertical climbing is it i'd say there's a lot of sections that are uh, technically difficult to climb because they're just so steep and unrideable like the section of mount esther and then there's a couple of coming into uh Ala Magre there there was a super steep section going counterclockwise it seemed like there were, it was more rideable but there was a couple of long climbs that were pretty much impossible to climb whether you were on a single speed or a geared bike but the descents weren't like super technical that you had to walk any descents is the trail designed f- mostly for hikers or is anyone is was it was it done with any any particular group of people in mind just the, the friends of the peak website says that it's open 100 percent to bikes and hikers and then there's certain parts that are open to horses but but not many you couldn't ring the whole peak on on a horse but as far as i know people hike it and then you know bicycles are i think the main usage for it or at least so far it seems it would be very difficult to do that whole hike in one shot Um, there's lots of road sections and highway sections that just would not be much fun there's a small like five mile or six mile section of highway on 67 that you have to do and that would just be terrible as a hiker to have mm-hmm. to hike that section of road with all the cars and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. It doesn't sound much fun, but it seems it seems like it's really designed more for biking around the thing than it would be to yeah for hiking. Doug, you said there were um, that there were parts of it that were just incredibly steep and difficult. I mean, do, is it their intention that it be something that? I mean, it's is it meant to be a challenge or is it meant to be something that eventually will be more accessible to more people? I think it was meant to be a a long backcountry experience. I think they designed it. They wanted to link up all the trails so you could have a really long backcountry experience, whether you're on a bike or whether you're hiking. And right now, because you can't link up the whole thing completely off-road, you have to ride a lot of gravel road and some actual paved road. It's not very friendly for hiking right at the moment. You know, as far as the difficulty of the trail, I don't think they, I mean, they're... They were just putting together they what have, was there. Yeah, what the existing. trails they have to yeah. work with existing trails to get you around the private area and around Pikes Peak Toll Road and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Some of the existing trails that were there are just difficult trails anyway, so that's all they had to work with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it would have been way too difficult to try to cut some sections mm-hmm. in. I think their efforts would be better spent, um, you know, adopting new land or, or you know, putting trying to get some trail through some national forest that's not currently has a trail through so i think they tried to focus their efforts where they needed to and just use pieces that are existing beyond the difficulty of it what what was the ride like so beautiful there's sections on the back side of the peak that that i've never been to before that was one of the impetus to do this that i just wanted to explore you know some more of the backyard and there were sections that are just so beautiful that that you would see you know up in the you know higher continental divide area um three foot tall grasses. I saw fresh strawberries growing on the trail in one spot. I mean, just amazing stuff. And wildflowers this year are just mm-hmm. incredible. Yeah, just I like I've, ne- I have, I've lived here 30 years and this year just seems to be some of the most amazing flowers this late in the season. Um, how challenging of a ride was it? It's as hard as anything we've done as far as like our difficult rides go. I, I think it was easily one of the hardest rides we did this year. But I, for me, it was like, also one of the most rewarding because it was something we've been talking about for so long and then also it was in a way our home turf so it was really cool to like do something that was like so big and so epic but still in our backyard you know and it was cool to see parts of you know our backyard that we've never seen before and explore all these things and I don't know it was cool we there's a guy in town that we heard did it a long time ago and I was always kind of hounding him every time I saw him about what it was like and he seemed to think it was pretty miserable (laughs) And would never, never do it again, <laughs> and so we were kind of scared. But after doing it, I mean, as soon as we finished, we were talking about doing it again next year just because it was, I don't know, at least for me, it was a lot of fun. 